The views on a breath of fresh air podcast reflects the parties involved, and we encourage you all to use it as a conversational tool that will lead to personal studies of your own. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Welcome to a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. Here with your hosts, Earl Roberts and Nakaz Gay. As a young person, Christianity can be so foggy, like smoke in the mirrors and so unclear. But we're here to bring you a breath of fresh air. Man, I am, uh, I need to uh, use that cave over there to relieve myself. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'll be I'll be safe in the cave. Don't worry. I mean, there's only some sheep here. Like, don't worry, guys. I'll be okay. Uh. Huh? Am I seeing things? Th- That's the king. And he has no idea that we're in here. David. Can't you see? This is the day that God spoke of. When he said he'll deliver your enemies into your hands So that you can do as you please Yes, today is that day And I'll do it quietly Could it be this easy? Maybe he knows I'm here and it's a trap So before I make my move I'll start off by taking a piece of his garment to see if he reacts. <gasps> I can't touch him. He's God's anointed. I gotta get back to the guys. How'd it go? Did you kill him? No. The Lord forbid that I do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed. Or lay a hand on him. Because he's the anointed of the Lord. That sounds beautiful and all, but if you don't kill him, I will. I'm not doing it. And neither will you or any of our men. No one will touch the Lord's anointed. I ran over there and I cut off a piece of his garment. And as I did that, the Lord came mightily upon my conscience. And he forbid me to do such a thing. So neither will you. Understood? Understood? Naturally, when a person is on the run, they would want to lay low, especially if they are hiding from the king. However, David wasn't your ordinary fugitive. Even in the midst of his troubles, he was called to serve others. In this episode, we are discussing 1 Samuel chapters 23 and 24. As always, be blessed and enjoy. All right, welcome back to another episode of A Breath of Fresh Air podcast. My name is Earl Roberts. My name is Nikaz Gay. And we are Breath of Fresh Air. <laughs> yeah, I was like, not sure if like that should come next, right? But yeah. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> but we definitely appreciate everyone who's tuning in. If you're listening on a streaming platform, whichever one you are listening on, which we need to experiment with these things. Who knows? We might, by the time this episode is released, we might experiment. But apparently on Spotify, one... Every Spotify, there should be a question or a poll, mostly questions because we don't really talk about the polls beforehand. So, but definitely like there's some engagement on Spotify you guys can do. And even looks like you guys can probably start leaving like voice messages or that kind of stuff on Spotify. But we definitely want more crowd and audience interaction Um, on YouTube. I want everyone who's listening to leave a comment. If you could, if you're listening to the streaming platform, if you can go to YouTube One, while you're there, make sure you're subscribed. Two, if you like what we've been saying, like the podcast. And three, leave a comment. Leave a comment. We definitely appreciate comments. We definitely try to answer comments and read about comments. And we just, we really want you guys' perspective. If you agree with us, like, just say I agree or give your own perspective on why you agree. And then if you disagree, like, or have a different opinion on some based on what we said, 
like we want like we we genuinely want to hear your opinion on whatever passage it is we're discussing of the Bible and just get a new perspective on it too. And then you know we can we will talk about it like we'll engage back with you. We'll talk. We'll discuss. Ask our friend Twig man. He he definitely knows. He definitely <laughs> knows. But definitely definitely appreciate everyone. If you like what if you like it, um, share it with at least one person. Share with at least one person. We definitely we're still trying to go, but we've seen God working through the podcast through us, and it's slowly growing and. Sometimes slow growth is the best sustained growth, like, because, you know, you, you grow slow and you could sustain it and keep it up. And we're still working on stuff. This, we're in the, we're in the 90s of episodes now. Like, this might be episode 90, 91. I can't really tell at this point. But it's just, it's just impactful because I remember when we started, oh, I might be getting ahead again because you probably still probably be on the next episode. But when we started, it just... Like, we knew we wanted to go through the whole Bible, but it's like now actually doing it and just seeing our growth spiritually, it's just been impressive to see. And yeah, just from a typical podcast and then through the pandemic and actually taking the steps to actually say, you know what, we're actually, no, actually going to record. We're actually going to like make this a thing. And now to just have the dedication to actually like think about the podcast during the week, to actually like come on the weekends and record, to actually releasing the episodes, to actually engaging the people who actually listen um, it, it's been impactful, man. It's definitely been impactful on us, and on, on, definitely on us. And hopefully, through God, I mean, because we're not interested in even any of our glory, but through God, that like, you too are being blessed. And I assume you are because you're here listening. So, Amen. definitely appreciate everyone who listens, everyone who shares, everyone who even listens for five minutes. I mean, we would hope you listen to the whole thing, but you know, just to, hopefully God is using the podcast in a way in your life that you can be blessed. So, I mean, yeah, man. So. We're still talking about David. Surprise, surprise. Last week, we see how, and we said this off pod, but it's interesting that the king that they chose, the people chose, the king that they wanted, the king that they envisioned is the very same king that I jokingly said, it's like the days before Israel had a king. Hmm. Because in the days before Israel had a king, we know it was it was pretty grim, pretty dark. They was having this own civil war. They were killing like the Benjamites almost got completely wiped out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And now we seeing, we saw Saul. Who is a Benjamite. Ironically so, huh? <laughs> who is a Benjamite. <laughs> ordered Doeg, an Edomite, to kill all of Ahimelech's family, the whole city of Nob. 85 priests were slaughtered. Mm. Every man, woman, child, donkey, oxen, camel, anything that had breath. <laughs> ironically so <laughs> pun intended but anyone that had breath was wiped out in the city of Nob and it just really shows the how far how how far Saul has fallen away from God because and it's it's the beauty of what God does sometimes and allows the sin to fully fester so in the end, because we're gonna like again, I know Kazi admits this too, and like we were talking about like but again at the beginning it was kind of hard to see like, bro, was Saul really making a mistake? Was he like what was really happening with him? But now as as time goes on, you can really the full the fullness of his heart was revealed. What he what he was stirring up in his heart that was easy to conceal at first is now becoming harder and harder to conceal as his heart's been hardened, as he's, he's because he has hardened his own heart and to show his true intentions and his true desires, because now you see an Israelite king who the people wanted just killed the whole Israelite city of priests. Hmm. When the guards didn't want to do it, he was so determined to kill these people because he assumed that one of them helped David. And in his hatred towards killing David, he annihilated a whole city. And it's just... It's just... Just, just sick, bro. Like, yeah. Just sick. Um, at this point... Saul isn't a Christian. He's, he's isn't an Israelite. But well, he's an Israelite by birth, right? By race. But at the same time, he is an Israelite in practice. He's breaking the Torah. He's breaking the law of God in order to fulfill his own um, desires or his own ambitions. Uh, one of the things that is so interesting to me is that, like, the devil, bro, he, it's like, don't be confused. The devil doesn't want you to worship him. Like, he doesn't want you to be a like a Luciferian or a Satanist. That's that that isn't sufficient for him. Like that 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 isn't all that he wants, bro. Like sometimes he just wants you to worship yourself. And and that's 
good enough for him. He wants you to say you are more important than God. And not to physically not to like physically say that, but by your actions. So when God is telling you to live with his, in a certain standard and you tell yourself, this is my path, this is my truth, this is my journey, this is my, 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 Mercy. you are putting the authority over God, you know, and over righteousness. So you create your own righteousness. And that's really what the devil wants you to do. You, you understand? So that's why, man, you know, it's, it's, it, we have defined religion, but then we have certain religions where it's just like spirituality and, and you just you just freestyle what you want to do and, and how you do it. But it's always my, it's always this my journey, this my truth, this is my peace. And it's always, um, it's always personal to you, but it, it, it excludes the divinity of God. You understand what I'm saying? It excludes, it excludes God's um, purpose for you. It excludes God's wisdom and his purpose for the world. And we can see where Saul was given where Saul had all of the tools to know what a king should do. However, he decided that my, I am going to call the shots. You call the shots as a civil servant or, or in civil matters because you are a king. But when it comes to the things of God, you do not call the shots. You do not have no say. I am right now. I, I am referencing like Psalm, 1 Samuel like 13, where he was, I think it's 13, where he was supposed to wait on Samuel to offer the sacrifice, but what he did, I decided I'm going to do it. Sam, you're taking too long, bro. You didn't come in the provision time, so I'm going to offer the sacrifice. And to us, it might be no biggie, you know. But the problem is, Saul was not authorized to offer that sacrifice. By law, by the law of God, only the priest should offer, offer sacrifices. Saul disobeyed God. When God told Saul, um, Saul when, through the prophet Samuel, when God told Saul through Samuel to destroy um, 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 Amalek, the Amalekites, Blot out everyone. So I'll decide we can take every, we can kill everyone except all of the good stuff because I am going to offer a sacrifice unto God. This is a personal decision for, for Saul. The point I'm, the point I'm really making is, the, um, what, what is it? Um, rebellion is like divination mm -hmm. and arrogance is like idolatry, idolatry. right? Yep. So Saul is acting the way the people in the book of Judges act when they were quite literally worshiping idols. Saul is now slaying people. He's now, he, he was going to kill his son multiple times, right? He is going to, kill, he, he killed um, the, the priest. Um, Saul wants to kill David, who is an innocent man. David have to run as a fugitive. His family have to be uprooted from Judah. His parents have to live in the land of Moab, right? Just for their own safety. Saul is arcing like a madman. And he's arcing like, to your point, when Israel had no king, you know? And that's because Saul is 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 festering idolatry within his heart. That's why I'm saying Saul isn't a Christian or a, a Israelite. I'm saying Christian because it's making it relevant to us today. Mm -hmm. Saul isn't an Israelite by religion. You understand? He's following idolatry by, by, by religion. But he's idolizing himself. I am the law. That is Saul. You feel me? And the only point I want to make is that this week I came across people who was talking about a specific show that glorifies the devil and it gives him... Uh, it kind of personifies him and it, and it makes you feel like maybe he's just misunderstood. You understand? Maybe, you know, you know, some people really do believe that truth and darkness, good and evil are equal, that God and the devil are equal. And it's just perspective. You understand? And some people truly believe that. I kid you not. Bro. Yeah, the yin and yang principle. The yin and yang principle. And then we are the middle of yin and yang. So we could lean to wherever our perspective um, um, falls over on it. If you feel like good is good, bad is bad, you define it. That's a I, that's a me, that's... That's what I'm saying. The devil, the devil just wants you to be in control. It's not God. Like we're not, we're not submitting. We talk about submitting to God often, but too much times on this podcast, bro. But it's certain principles that are secular and, and worldly mm -hmm. that that gives you the, the authority that that tells you I'm not submitting to God or His religion. I define good and evil, and that's what that was where Adam and Eve went wrong. They wanted to be able to define good and evil. When 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 um the serpent gave Eve the option, she said yes, I'm gonna do that. And she took she took it because she knew that this the tree is called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know if you eat this, you're gonna have both. The devil said, bro, if you have both, you're gonna be like God. And what mm -hmm. she said, she didn't physically say that, but by her actions, we know that that sounded like a good deal to her. So she did eat. Saul is is deciding his own fate right now. You understand what I'm saying? I felt bad for Saul in the same way people want to feel bad for the devil saying, oh, maybe he was misunderstood. Remember, I talk about this all the time and I want to be honest with myself. I want to be honest with the podcast. It happens. We misinterpret the Bible. Sometimes we, we, we feel sympathetic 
to, to people to feel like maybe God ain't right. But no, God is always proven right. When Saul killed all, I right, sorry for this tangent. When Saul killed all of them, all of them um priests, we see the fullest extent of Saul's anger, bro. The fullest extent of his rebellion and his idolatry of himself, bro. He's willing to do anything. I am willing to kill the messengers of God if it means getting in the way of my um plans or my glory or my mm -hmm. honor, you know. And that's where Saul is at. And we can see that that's 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 something what the devil does, you know. And so that's why it's, it's dangerous for, for us as human beings to say we are in control and it's dangerous for us to say we want to sympathize with the devil or we want to think of him as misunderstood. That's, that's foolishness. Basically, that's, that's my piece. <laughs> wow. So this week we are picking up in 1 Samuel chapter 23. So I'm going to start reading from verse 1. Then they told David, saying... Look, the Philistines are fighting in Kalia, and they are robbing and threshing the threshing floors. That's threshing floors where they like did the wheat and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, then, therefore, David inquired of the Lord, saying, "Shall I go and attack these Philistines?" The Lord said to David, "Go and attack the Philistines and save Kalia." But David's man said to him, "Look, we were afraid in Judah. How much more than if we go to Kalia against the armies of the Philistines?" Then David inquired of the Lord once again, and the Lord answered him and said. Arise and go down to Kalia, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. And David and his men went to Kalia, and they fought with the Philistines, struck them a mighty blow, and took away their livestock. So David saved the inhabitants of the Kalia of Kalia. So the reason why that part's so like important, right? Because think about it. Who is still the king right now? Saul. Mm -hmm. it's, as a king, it is literally your job to protect your nation mm -hmm. it's your job to send an army to go defend and we know and david was like hold on hold on hold on i'm still not king for real technically i still on the run really and truly yeah y'all know how to find me but <laughs> they're saying my bottle my <laughs> okay so i think so now you go to kalia now right and young man gonna be exposed they're gonna be in the field well wherever you killing the philistines but everyone's gonna know like david's fighting this battle this is the king's job i'm not the king uh, that's what we see david really asking a lot like Yo, well, not really yo, but <laughs> like God, I, um, like, are you sure, like, you really want me to go do this? Because again, it is just kind of out of place for David to go do this right now. Mm -hmm. Lord saying no, like, me, I guess speaking for the Lord, like, I, God said I'll deliver you. Like, no, I want you to go do this. Don't worry about Saul. Don't worry about that stuff. Again, we seen God say no. Trust me. Mm -hmm. I already told you once. Go. I ain't, my word ain't changed. Go mm -hmm. and do it. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Trust me. I'll deliver them into your hands. And like, don't don't worry about Saul. And we see Saul just wasn't fulfilling his duties as a king at all anymore. Yeah. Um, what's interesting to me, he was robbing the threshing floors. This is something we mentioned a long time ago when, mm -hmm. when he was reading the book of Ruth. But why slap on the threshing floor? Why? Mm -hmm. So that nobody can rob him. So for, for all those um, wondering, the threshing floor, this where they grain, like wheat and grain and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's a floor and they use it to, to grain, to, to, break, to break it down. So now you got all of this grain just sitting on this, on this floor. You leave and go to sleep or go to your house or something. People could easily run and take up all of your grain in the middle of the night. You see what I'm saying? And so now the Philistines... What they was doing, they was looting. They like, bro, we see a bunch of threshing floor. Y'all didn't work hard with y'all grain. Y'all didn't make bread or nothing out of it yet. We just taking this, bro. This free might food. Well. <laughs> we might as well just take it. And obviously the people in Kalea, they probably were unprotected or they just didn't have the mind power to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. And so David, you know, came to avenge them. And so that's that's really what's happening, just for, just for some context. And I believe that's why Boaz was sleeping on the threshing floor at night, because he's like, bro, you ain't gonna steal my stuff, bro. You're out of sleep, y'all. You see what I'm saying? This like, ain't gonna happen to me. No. <laughs> and so um, and so now we see, obviously, God was God delivered them into the hands of David, and he was successful. And so we see he had nothing to worry about. So now in verse six, now what happened when Abithar, we know this was the son of Ahimelech, fled to the to David at Kalia, that he went down with an ephod in his hand. And so verse 7, and Saul told, and Saul was told that David had gone to Kalia, and Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand, mm. for he has shut himself in by entering a town that has gates and bars. Mm. Let this sink in. Let this sink in. Who Saul say delivered God, David in design? God. He attributed this to God. 
but but we do that too though. We do that all the time, bro. Like just as a as a as a simple thing. Look mm. at God. Look at God. Mm-hmm. But truthfully, but this might not even be a blessing, right? But Mercy. the the parents of it of it might be like, look at God. Like mm-hmm. I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a, a scenario, right? Someone might cut you off, right? And then let's say let, let's say they cut you off in traffic, right? That same person make you mad. They cut you off. They might get into a car accident. You see what I'm saying? Or get stopped by the police. Someone may say in that situation, "Look at God," because you stay. Someone might say, "Look at God," because the person who just make me mad, they getting punished or they again penalized, right? It could be God, bro. It could be God slowing them down, punishing them, whatever. But it might not be. Like we we only can know when we see the outcome from it all. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Saul believes that. My enemy is in my hands. It can only be God. You see what I'm saying? In this instance, Saul probably thinking about the devil and he don't even know it, bro. Because by only the devil would try to get David in the hands to kill him, bro. That mm-hmm. ain't God's plan. That ain't God's will. Which exactly. God are you thinking about? You exactly. see what I'm saying? A lot of people is confused. Like they know they, in, their, in their heart of hearts, they believe they're talking about the most high God. But the way you categorize him or describe him, it's not describing God. So you can't be talking about him. You know what's so funny too? And sometimes people attribute the, the things, like look at the devil. That would mm-hmm. be something God do. That's true. And it's so interesting too, because like... <laughs> devil busy. The devil busy. <laughs> but like, you think about it. Let's just say I lose $5, right? I could be mad. Mm-hmm. Look at the devil. Mm-hmm. Someone find that $5 on the ground? Look at God. Mm-hmm. Look at the God. sad thing is, they might have need that five that $5 and that might have literally been a blessing for them. Mm-hmm. Me with a five dollars ain't gonna affect that much. Just a simple annoyance. Made the devil busy, but that's my good five dollars. Mm-hmm. I mod. It's just it's just interesting how, how it literally works both ways. Yeah. It's just the matter on which receiving end you want is who you attribute it to. Mm-hmm. But not knowing that. I mean, like I like I say too, God sent the five years of farmer, just how he sent the five years of plenty. That's true. Like you can't you gotta take the good of the bad. And that's true. And God sent that. Mm-hmm. Like li- literally God sent that. You see what I'm saying? Like and then throughout the Bible, bro, you can see where God sent many farmers, sent pestilence. And like, a jo- and like Job said it the best, bro. Like, am I not to expect the good? good. I mean, but the bow, not but the good. Right. And then he said, though they slay me yet, will I trust you? You know what I mean? Like, straight up. So like, even in even in the means of persecution or just I use it as a mm-hmm. blanket statement. Like mm-hmm. when, you, when bad things or, or things that aren't good are happening to you. You know what I'm saying? It don't automatically just mean it's the devil. You see what I'm saying? It might really, it might literally be God, bro. Like, or it might be one of them things where it's God allowing it, allowing it, the Unless, devil to, exactly. you see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but I do like how Saul offered the context of why David's men were so hesitant about David going. Mm-hmm. Because now you've seen the real, the, the full context is, yeah, we're going, we going to help the city out, but this city one way in, one way out. Exactly. Yeah. Like, we go there, bro, we will be trapped. Yeah. So it's like, we doing a good, but we setting our own selves up. <laughs> so you can see the context. And so now, um, we bring in verse 8, Then Saul called together the people for war to go down to Kalia and besiege David and his men. But when David knew, when David knew that Saul plotted evil against him, he said to Abithar the priest, Bring the ephod. Bring the ephod here. Then David said, O Lord, God of Israel, your servant has certainly heard that Saul seeks to come to Kalia and destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Kalia deliver me into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant, as, as, as your servant has, has heard? O Lord, God of Israel, I pray, tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. Yep. Then David said, will the men of Kalia deliver me and my men to the hand of Saul? <laughs> The Lord said, they, they will, will deliver you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting to me, bro. And it's just so funny, bro, because these are the same people I just fight fight for. Exactly. But then guess what? In all fairness, we can say Nassau, our little city, right? <sighs> Let's say we go to war, somebody attacking us. And, mm-hmm. and this fugitive come and fight on our behalf, right? Regardless of why it is a fugitive. Maybe right, maybe wrong, right? If you know that when the king come, the king gonna kill everyone in this city if y'all don't give over one man. Do you truly believe that in our city or in any city, you know, people are gonna say no? We rather y'all kill us to spare this one person. You know what I mean? Like I feel like it takes a lot of selflessness to be in that predicament. You know what I mean? And so in all fairness to Kalea, I could understand 
how how not why or well I can understand why too you see what I'm saying mm-hmm. but why or how they would give David up <laughs> if it's their life and their mommy and their brothers and sisters life over if David, you was David how would you feel I'd feel betrayed I'd feel like I'd personally personally bro just being candid I'd feel like why God why you even send me up <laughs> That's not, that's what I would be. Like, bro, like, what was the point of this, bro? I'd like, be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you letting me know, but what? Yeah, I th- I think it could be some type of secret secret blessing behind sir, saving these people, but no, I just ended up in the same place with more people trying to betray me. I'd have been mad, bro. I ain't yeah. even gonna lie. It right? wouldn't have made sense to me, but at the end of the day, God will be trust. done. Yeah, like you see what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, if if we if these are God's people and this and God allows me to be the vessel to protect them, I'd rather them be protected than all of us be unprotected. Like the Philistines um looting y'all and attacking y'all, no one helping y'all while I still on the run. I rather want us be. But safe. I do appreciate still God letting them know saying, okay, guess what? Yeah, you did what you had to do, but it's time. Don't don't get comfortable. You need to go. Yeah. And you need to go. Like, don't stay here like saying, Oh yeah, I just helped them out. And in, in your naiveness, I just helped them where they can protect me. God's saying. No, no. That's, that's not my will. No. That's not my plan. No, I, I sent you here for your mission. Yeah, the mission is done. C- accomplished. Now you got to go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> got to go, bud. Oh, my. <laughs> so David and his men, reading from verse 13, David and his men, about 600 arose and departed from Kalia and went wherever they could go. Then it was told to Saul that David had escaped from Kalia, so he halted the expedition. In verse 14, and David stayed in the strongholds in the wilderness and remained in the mountains in the wilderness of Zeph. Mm. Zeph, however you want to say it. Saul sought him every day, but God did not deliver him into his hands. Think about that, bro. Mm. Every day. And you're all in the same vicinity, bro. Ain't every week, ain't, ain't like once a week or once a month. No, every day without like, no, we, we out here looking for you. Mm. So David saw that Saul had come out to seek his life and David was in the wilderness of, of Zeph. In the forest. Then Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand in how, God. How Jonathan is end up finding the, bro, him, bro. Like, how everyone is finding, bro. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's just how you know mm-hmm. God was protecting him, bro. Because, like, anyone who needed to find David is finding David. Except, except, for, the, the, except for the one who want to find him the most. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and he said to him, do not fear for the hand of Saul, my father shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel and I shall be next to you. Even my father Saul, even my father Saul knows that. Boy, oh boy, you just read these things and you just be like, oh boy. Oh. So the two of, so the two of them made a covenant before the Lord and David stayed in the woods and Jonathan went to his own house. They like make some covenants, boy. Your dog. And I feel like that's so, that's so assuring for David because Jonathan could have, but over time, Jonathan could have turned around and said, but you know what? I can kill this guy because, truthfully, this coming between me. But Jonathan, I don't know how Jonathan is. I, I believe that Jonathan feared God, right? But when you see how people is in history, and, and forgive me, I watch too many medieval shows and too many history like shows and docuseries recently, but some people just get bloodthirsty and decide, but I can kill my daddy and I can kill everybody. Or my, no, no. No, don't even worry about that. Forget about that. Abimelech. Mm-hmm. Abimelech in the book of Judges. Uh, I think it's like Judges 13 or somewhere around Gideon's there. son, yeah. Gideon's son. He, he turned around and killed 68 of his brothers. I think oh, it was 70 of them. Yeah. Right? He killed everybody. One day he wake up and like, no, I won't be king today, bro. All y'all getting killed. Mm-hmm. You see what they saying? I so, can be ruler of this estate. Real talk. And so, you never know. Jonathan might have been like, bro, well, today is the day I want I want to establish my throne. Oh, I want to make my throne even stronger so I could I could deal with David. I could kill him. You see what I'm saying? But no, Jonathan coming to David saying, bro, dog, you will be king. We know this, bro. Everybody know this. Even my father knows this, bro. But we can reign it together. You have my oath, my covenant. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I, I just feel like that's that's really that's really cool because you can see Jonathan is selfless in that. But who does that, bro? Who's giving up their birthright throne, bro? Like, unless it's somebody who you know. <laughs> I know someone. Oh, yeah, I know someone who's giving it up for sure. But um, Unless it's some, unless it's someone you know who who really just like they ain't cut out to be a leader, cause you know, and it's some it's some people they just ain't built for this, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like they yeah. whole they whole life they ain't prepared for this, and it just ain't in them to be that. But mm-hmm. we don't know that that's Jonathan. I don't think that's Jonathan, you know. But and Jonathan we see Jonathan have the attributes 
the funny thing about it is like Jonathan's more fit to be king than Saul is to be king because God Jonathan actually has a relationship with God mm-hmm. and he is a warrior and yep. he you know but it's because of Saul's sin that Jonathan losing out. Yep. But it's like Jonathan already accepted and, and at peace with that. But his father is not at peace because it's deeper than that, bro. Can't stomach it. Yeah, it, it, it deeper than that, bro. Like so all of a spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. He fighting. And he can't, we already know, we already have addressed that he is not accepting of, of his his position. He's trying to change the outcome. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see how that goes. And, and I feel like it's stuff like this in the Bible that like, you know, you don't have to learn things the hard way. You could learn from the mistakes of others, bro. We could see where it's like, if if the writing is on the wall or if something is inevitable, no matter how you try to change it, if it's God's will, his will will be done. No matter how, you could be the king, but you could be the most powerful man in in Israel and you can't change that. You know, you could be in the vicinity. You could be in the wilderness searching for someone who is also in the wilderness Mm -hmm. and you don't find him, bro. That's Mm -hmm. just God's will will be done. That's just how it is. So, yeah, man. Um, In verse 19 now, the Ziphites came to Saul at Gibeah saying, is David not hiding with us in the strongholds in the woods in the hill of Snitching. Akiloth? Yeah. <laughs> which is south of Jeshimon. Jesh, Jeshimon. Jeshimon. My, my, my apologies. You know when you read things in your head, you don't have to say it right. Mm-hmm. But the minute you say it out, out loud, <laughs> you have to be like, oh, this, this actually goes together. <laughs> <laughs> now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of your soul to come down. Oh, now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of your soul to come down. And your part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. See, this is some more people just snitching, bro. <laughs> They're like, Saul, David is among us, bro. David is among us now. We can give you your heart's desire, which is to kill David. And when I say we can give it to you, we will give, bro. Like, you ain't going to find him in our land. We go give him to you. Mm-hmm. Mm. They write a check. They can't cash, right? I mean... Even if I didn't read the end of this story, I would be confident to say that, you know, they're not going to hold up their end of the bargain. And then Saul said, blessed are you of the Lord, for you have compassion on me. Wow. Please go and find out for sure and see the place where his hideout is and who he and who has seen him there. For I am told he is very crafty. Hmm. See, therefore, and take the knowledge He's of, a crafty one. <laughs> of all the lurking places where he hides. Mm. And come back to me with certainty, and I will go with you. And it shall be, if he is in the land, that I will search for him throughout all the clans of Judah. Verse 24. So they arose and went to Ziph before Saul, but David and his men were in the wilderness of Mo- Maon, in the plain south of Jeshimon. When Saul and his men went to seek him, they told David, Therefore he went down to the rock and stayed in the wilderness of Maun. And when Saul heard that he pursued David in the wilderness of Maun, then Saul went on one side of the mountain and David and his men on the other side of the mountain. Mm. So David made haste to get away from Saul, for Saul and his men were encircling David and his men to take them. Well, I'm going to read one thing. So in... Uh, Psalms 54 is a tribute to David with the Ziphites. When they say it, David's not among us. So in verse 1, Save me, O God, by your name. Vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God. Listen to the words of my mouth. Strangers are attacking me. Ruthless men for my life. Men without regard for God. Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. Let evil recoil on those who slander me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will sacrifice a free will offering to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For it is he who hath delivered me from my troubles. And my eyes have looked in triumph on my foes. They would say, strangers, bro. I don't even know y'all Ziphites, bro. Y'all coming at me, bro. For what reason? Who are you, bro? And again, it's like, bro, what, what harm have I done to you guys? Yeah, like, what, what harm have I done? Like, why y'all after me? Wait, like, why y'all trying to kiss up after Saul, bro? Like, Ziphite, that's, I don't, I'm not familiar with them. Like, they don't sound like an Israelite clan, bro. So why y'all trying to make cahoots with Saul? Like, yeah, Ziph was a town on the southern tip of the Dead Sea. So, like, yeah, and they had mountains and stuff. But, yeah, I don't, I don't really know if they was. Like, a part I never of heard a tribe of Ziph. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I never heard nothing about that town for real. But 
yeah, y'all strangers trying to pursue me, bro. Why? <laughs> like, like, what I do? For no reason, man. For no reason at all. And I guess just to end out this chops up, but the messenger came to Saul saying, hurry and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Therefore, we returned from pursuing David and went up against the Philistines. So they called for the place, they called that place the Rock of Escape. <laughs> then David went up from there and dwelt in the strongholds of En Gedi. En Gedi, yeah. En Gedi. Yeah. All right, so we can move on to chapter 24, too. Let's get it. Yeah, we've been knocking out two chapters a time lately. Yeah, <laughs> different. We ain't doing this in a while. Yeah, dog. Oh, this is this is a story that's so interesting. Oh man. Oh Ooh. yeah, that's a good one. Should we get into it? Yeah, it's gonna be like time. Yeah, we might as well. Might as well. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> it is anyway. So in uh verse chapter 24, verse 1, now what happened when Saul had returned from following the Philistines that it that it was told to him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men from mm. all Israel and went to seek David and his men in the rocks and the, on the rocks of the wild goats. Y'all ever see a mountain goat? I know it's just random. Bro. <laughs> if you're, yo, ladies and gentlemen, if you all have never seen a mountain goat, Google what a mountain goat looks like. It's, Please, bro. You would never, you would never believe it. <laughs> so he came to the sheepfoots. She came to the sheep folds by the road where there was a cave and Saul went in to attend to his needs. David and his men were staying in the recesses of the cave. Then the man of David said to him, this is the day in which the Lord said to you, behold, I will deliver the enemy into your hand that you may do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose and secretly cut off the corner of Saul's robe. I'm going to pause right there. Let's think about it now. And just put it like in more of a personal context. This person has been trying to kill you on multiple occasions mm. for an extended period of time. I ain't talking about like a week. I'm talking about years mm. at this point. You know what I'm saying? You caught him slipping. Mm, slipping bad, bro. <laughs> He's probably doing a number two, just to be honest with you, bro. Like, can't move right now. Bro. Like, <laughs> you caught him slipping. You so close to him that you was able to cut off it, cut off a piece of his robe. You know what I'm saying? Like you and the people who with you saying, bro, this is your time. Hmm. You could put an end to this. Yeah, you literally could put an end to this. Like, you ain't gotta be on the run no more. You ain't gotta worry about running for your life. You could go back and be with your family. You know, you could be chilling, bro. Like hmm. you could finally be king. Yeah. For real, for Straight real. Up. Easy like that. Man. And 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 David and David, we don't have no evidence to know that David wasn't was against that. You see what I'm saying? Like David looked like he was about to, <laughs> like, like he was about to actually go through with it. Mm-hmm. Um. So and David rose, and so now it happened afterwards that David had trouble him because he had cut Saul's robe. He, he feel guilty about it. You and that shows. Up, and I just you got to be connected with God, boy. Cause, woo, boy. Would I have cared? <laughs> I know plenty You're lucky people. That's all I do. I know plenty of people would ignore that still small voice. <laughs> you lucky you even still have a robe. Real talk is yeah. Truthfully, see David. David like he, um what do you call? What's the word? Ah, oh, I don't know the word, bro. But anyway, he. I won't say meticulous. Not meticulous, but he. Anyway, we could just say methodical. Uh, mm -hmm. And what he do so. He take the time and he say, but all right, I can test his eye and it's, ah, and then mm -hmm. you never know, someone might be hiding. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So he assessed the situation, right? He pull up behind Saul in this cave. This must have been a really big cave and circular or whatever, like, because you know, it was two different sides and you come from behind. Cut off the side of his rope, like, you testing out because you ready to kill him, right? You feel, mm -hmm. you feel convicted in your spirit against that. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to me. That is crazy to me because... You was a young man, bro. Imagine, put it in, put it in, we could put it in perspective, real life terms, right? Imagine you just graduate college, you um, you you married, you understand? You have a, a, a bright future ahead of you, bro. And you get wrongfully convicted and sentenced to death. Let's say by electric chair or whatever. You sentenced to death. While you're on trial, you make bail or whatever. 
and you just go on the run. You know you completely innocent. You know you completely innocent. And the one thing standing in between you and your freedom is in a dark alley where there ain't no witnesses. You see what I'm saying? And you, if you kill this person who's been trying to kill you, been trying to ruin your whole life, your whole trajectory, you will be exonerated and you will be free. And you go to do it and you feel convicted against it by God. Imagine that feeling, bro. Because truthfully, I, I bougie, bro. I can't imagine myself not sleeping in my bed for more than a week, bro. You see what I'm saying? Like me, if I go anywhere on vacation, I'd be ready to go home. But I kid you not, when that sixth day come, I am ready to go home, right? I miss my bed. I'm ready to get a good night's sleep, bro. And it's comfortable. You see what I'm saying? Imagine you have to go and you have a time of trouble. Now, we, as Christians, we are aware of the time of trouble that that's to come. Mm -hmm. You understand? And this tied to revelation when you won't be able to buy or sell. How, you, how else do you think you're going to be able to, to sustain? Mm -hmm. How else do you think, when the market of the beast comes around, do you think that not being able to buy or sell would give you option to eat? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, how else are you going to make a living mm -hmm. if you ain't um, growing and farming and stuff like that? If you're not being able to buy or sell, consider that. I don't care if you Adventist, whatever form of Christianity, if you read Revelation 13, I think that's where they talk about the market of the beast. It's either 13 or 14, all the way at the end of the chapter. Um, you would realize that there will be a time of trouble for us all, right? But now David had a play, and, and David wasn't prepped for this like at least we have the um the revelation to tell us that you see what i say david in a place where he could get revenge mm -hmm. you see what i saying? we know david has killed people for god so they didn't murder you understand what i'm saying like he went to war on behalf of god mm -hmm. but now you have personal revenge you could get mm -hmm. which would which is not fall under the protection of god because you know there's going to be murder at this point you mm -hmm. see what i saying? For for one specul it's only and it's only one thing was gonna make it a difference between murder and just defeating God's enemies. You see what I'm saying? Because remember when David was was a few chapters, a few um episodes ago, we talk about psalms where God was with, with certain psalms where God is asking David to I mean where David is asking God to destroy his enemies. You see what I'm saying? Saul is not only an enemy of David, but he's the enemy of God. You see what I'm saying? So if you kill Saul. You are actually killing the person who trying to stop God's um, will from, from, from happening. But the difference is Saul ain't just a regular person, bro. You see what I'm saying? Saul ain't just a regular person. We can get that to that mm -hmm. in just a second. We mm -hmm. can see why David could be so conscience-stricken when he just cut off a, a, a piece of his garment only. You see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. why we can see why God did not allow him to have revenge. Of vengeance in this moment because this ain't this ain't anyway we can see we, we can continue no I mean it's perfectly fine um verse 5 eight. verse 5 now what happened when David saw his trouble because he cut Saul's robe and then he said to the man the Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master the Lord's anointed to stretch out my hand against him seeing that he is an anointed of the Lord so David restrained his servants with these words and didn't allow them to rise against Saul. And Saul got up from the cave and went on his way. But these misfits, bro. These, these people who they could fight and everything, but they've been displaced, mm -hmm. right? This, you talking about, you have to say this to Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech. Mm -hmm. That you had the man who killed your daddy. And you just let him go free. This is the man who, of course, you can't even lay up with your wife, bro. Mm -hmm. You got to lay up with a bunch of men in the cave, not in a sexual way. I ain't trying to be funny or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But you got to be around a bunch of men in the wilderness, in the desert, in a cave because of this guy. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You can't, but your parents got to live in fear because of this guy. But you know what the difference is? Why this ain't just an enemy of yours? Like how the Philistine, like how, like how you can rise up against Goliath, even though Goliath was the enemy of God and Saul is also an enemy of God. The difference is Goliath was an anointed. Saul is still God's anointed. Mm -hmm. Even though Saul has given up his quote-unquote birthright, mm -hmm. given up his throne by being disobedient. At the end of the day, God anoint this person. And so, who God bless, no man curse, bro. Mercy. That's the, boy, that, that's the craziest thing to me. David, God saying, bro, David, I understand this your enemy and I understand what he do against me, but I just keep my promises, bro. You see what I'm saying? This morning, die until I say it is time for Saul to die. 
You see what they're saying? And it won't be by your hands. Not today. You see what they're saying? And that's the powerful thing right there. They were saying, I can't do this evil thing because God anointed him. Right? Only God can take him down from his tomb when God appoints the time to be correct. I, I, I believe David was even considering that this was Saul, this was God's anointed when he was when he's rolling up on Saul. When he tear off his garment, he felt guilty for that. It's I don't think it's illegal to tear off someone's <laughs> garment. You see what I'm saying? Like just to send a message back, catch you slipping. Real talk. I trying to send you a powerful, profound message. But mm -hmm. even that, David felt guilty because God was like, bro, this anointed man, bro. This anointed man you trying to play with right now, bro. Regardless, right or wrong, I you the thing about it is, it ain't about what he do to you. It's about what you doing to me because I take the time to anoint this guy. You see what they're saying? To have him anointed. And so I feel like that's powerful. And, mm -hmm. and that just go to show, bro, like, we can't... Like, vengeance is God's. Mm -hmm. Vengeance is God's at the end of the day. And that still show the restraint, too, though. Because yeah. even outside of the robe, again, in a human perspective, you don't even know I in this cave. Because, mm. I mean, just to paint the picture, like, okay... Saul went in the, in the cave to poop. Mm -hmm. For what it's worth. Yeah. Just to, to dispel people out. He went in the cave to poop. But the cave's so big. As we see the cave, the Bible painted the picture of the cave was even big enough to hold a sheep, a sheep flock. Mm -hmm. Just imagine 600 sheep in a, in a, in a cave. Right? So this, this is a pretty big cave. So the fact that Saul went to do personal matters, he didn't have his bodyguards and stuff with him. The cave's so big and so long, David them way in the back of the cave mm -hmm. now. And Saul just coming in the front of the cave in the front, you know, doing what he got to do. So he ain't even noticed, bro. He ain't even concerned about David them being way in the back because he don't even think no one else in this cave. Hmm. David them was able to run up on him. Well, not him, but he's able to say, oh, Saul out there. Oh, that's Saul. No, that's Saul, Saul. Like, hmm. you go there. You get so close, you could, you could. But if you're close enough to get his gun, you're close enough to kill him without, sure. without him even know. And you have a bunch of people who, as we say in the bomb was hot up to yeah. kill him. Very, very yeah. eager. Yeah. Like this is the end of my troubles too. Yeah. <laughs> like we can go back in the city as heroes. But yeah, and then this guy could be king if he killed Saul. And exactly. then what that could make me. You see exactly. what I'm saying? Like, so now you saying about like just to restrain on David's part to say, guys, I understand our life can be harder if we don't do this, but it ain't right if we do this. But and David had to actually fight. That was a hard thing. That was a hard conversation to have, bro. That was a hard conversation because you still got to pacify these 600 men now. Right. And then, to talk them down and be like, guys, we ain't doing this. You know, but what you mean we ain't doing this? We ain't doing this. Yeah. Touch not God's anointed. Like, this is an anointed man of God. I mm. can't do this. And, and that's, when you read in the Bible, his ways, not our ways. And you see stuff like this, like, bro, because it would have been, and I don't want to say like, I was a murderer or nothing. Like, mm -hmm. But still, like, but it's the end of your troubles right here in your grasp. You still have to trust God. Because, like, again, now I don't even know how much longer I can be in the wilderness now. Because hmm. I had the opportunity right there. And every time something else happened, I know I got to talk, answer these guys. But you had the opportunity to kill him, you know. Now we still on the run because you ain't kill him. Yeah, people can respect your restraint. But then people could also say, you stupid, bro. Or you, or you was a punk, bro. You was a, you, you a soft boy, bro. Like, you, you ain't mad enough. To do what you got to do, bro. The mom was right there and you was scared, bro. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to deal with that. If if they didn't respect David that much. I, I assume they respect him, but at the end of the day, everybody got their own, their own thoughts, bro. Everybody is their own person, dog. I just feel like that was a hard conversation to have, bro. What you mean you want to do that, bro? Like, that's a that's a let down, dog. That's, mm -hmm. that's disappointing. The so, moment we've been waiting for, bro. Exactly. Like. And now this one even gets more powerful than me. We see Saul leave the cave and then David also rose and went out of the cave and called to Saul saying, my Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed down. And David said to Saul, why do you listen to the words of men who say, indeed, David seeks your harm? Look this day, your eyes have seen the Lord delivered you today into my hand in the cave. And someone urged me to kill you, but my eyes spared you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against the Lord, for he is the Lord anointed. And the reason why that's so powerful to me is remember all this time Saul kept on saying, The Lord delivered David into my hands. Yep. Surely this is the Lord's doing. Mm -hmm. And now on the flip side, Saul, when he thought he was safe, you really see that you got a question, maybe God did deliver me into his hands, but David ain't kill me. Mm. And now you really have to have some type of introspective moment. Hold on. He really could have killed me. Real talk. He he had a better shot than I did. 
And bro, no one would have known. <laughs> Your man would have come in the cave and be like, what happened yeah. to Saul? Right. What happened to Saul? Because David then probably could have retreated back in the cave and they might have they might have an alternative exit in the back That's of the cave. That's what I say. It's like certain caves, bro, you could come in from so much different ways, bro. Because I question how David could have got so close on Saul without him hearing or being... Mm-hmm. Or whatever. But I just like, bro, if this is a big cave, you might, but you and your people might be, might have been around this cave from long time. You see what I'm saying? But y'all might have been on the whole other side. Y'all traveling. Y'all like, hold on. Look at this boy. Mm-hmm. We could come from a different route and just get close up on him and he wouldn't even know because he don't know this cave. Like, oh, we know. We, we've been in this cave for exactly. longer than you. You see what I'm saying? We didn't mop this cave out. <laughs> this is the spot. <laughs> And so now we see in verse 11, moreover, my father, see, yes, see the corner of your robe in my hand, for in that cut, for in that I cut off the corner of your robe and not kill you. Know that, know and see that there is, an, there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand, and I have not sinned against you, yet you hunt my life to take it. Let the Lord judge between you and me, and let the Lord avenge me on you. But my hand shall not be against you. As the proverb of the ancient said, wickedness proceeds from the wicked. But my hand shall not be against you. After whom the king of Israel, after whom was the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? Therefore, let the Lord be a judge and judge between me and you and see and, pl- and, see and plead my case and deliver me from out of your hand. So it was when David had finished speaking these words to Saul, and Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have rewarded me with good, whereas I rewarded you with evil. Mm. And you have shown this day how you have dealt with me, for the Lord delivered me into your hand, and you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy... Will he let him get away safely? Nope. Hmm. That, that, no pain in the Bible, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now I know indeed that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Therefore, swear now to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me, and that you will not destroy my name from my father's house. So David swore to Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his man went up into the stronghold. We still ain't going with you now, buddy. Really? <laughs> but just know, we made this covenant and things are... We are right now. We squashed the beef. For now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we are right for right now. But it's so interesting to me because this show that Saul wholeheartedly believed that David was out to kill him. So I believe that. And even after they make peace, he said, bro, don't kill off my descendants and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? Because so I believe that's, that's David's intentions. Like if, if the prophet already tell you that your kingdom will no longer be there after you, right? And God appoint another person. That person who is king, I mean, it ain't far-fetched to just assume that that person who become king, they'll become king by killing you and killing off your descendants. Mm-hmm. You know? I just, but again, we see like Saul start to take well, replicate the other nations around him. And that's just the way of life, bro. Next king come on the throne that ain't a part of your line. You're all going to die. Mm-hmm. You're all going to die. So it's all saying, it happened over there. It happened over there. It happened, it happened in Edom. It happened in Moab. It happened in, in Philistia. Philistia. Yeah. Like, shoot, man. It's going to happen to me. <laughs> and we see and we see Saul again saying, hey, don't just don't kill off my descendants. Like, yeah. Just you know, spare him. Mm-hmm. Saul is asking for the same grace and mercy be extended to him and his family that he didn't show to the people of Nob. Nope. Mm. I just feel like in life, a lot of people just be self, not they don't be as self aware, like or as loving they they neighbor as thyself. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you can see people who commit murder. You know, and when when they people when they have someone who who they care about is murdered, they don't see that as they don't see that and say, well, you know, I commit murder and someone murder one of my boys. You know. Like, we even, they don't see it as that. Oh, no, we need more revenge. Like, it's like a, a never-ending, it's like an insatiable bloodlust, you know? And that's Saul. Saul, you know, it, because we, Saul lives in a world where Saul is the main character, you know what I'm saying? So, I could do all right, and uh, I could do whatever I want, and I'm right. You see what they're saying? And 
if you do it to me, you're wrong. If mm-hmm. you do the same thing to me, you're wrong. You know, I don't want that done to me, but I'm still doing that to people. You know, I don't really care about doing the right thing. I just want myself to be comfortable at all times. So that means you can't kill my people, but I could kill your people. Or, mm-hmm. or people who give you bread and pray for you, I could kill them. But if it's someone who's the rightful heir to the throne, no, don't kill them. You know, just make an oath with me. And this is actually Saul's second oath with David. <laughs> That's a fact. And so if I was David, I would not buy that. Mercy. Which is why I see why David went back into his stronghold. You know, David ain't stupid. David ain't saying, oh yeah, we could go and chill. You know what I mean? David Saul might have kept modern trying to kill him that same night, bro. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then the evil spirit started bothering Saul. Your dog. Saul was like, oh, David's here. Where's my spear? <laughs> Saul might have forget that whole old bro. Like, he might have catch amnesia. Where's my spear? Wake up and see David and then just start freaking out like he's going to kill him or something. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I know, bro. So overall, what you like, I mean, I guess that's kind of what you think, but like, with these two chapters, what, what stand out to you? Obviously, the, the um, David Ketchy boy, when he was on the pot. <laughs> Fox. <laughs> Bro, remember, remember what Ehud or Egla or, I can't yeah. remember, right? He was relieving himself, quote unquote, as the yeah. Bible. No, he the, wasn't. The fat king. He had gotten killed and, and his, 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 um. His descendants thought. Yeah, his attendants thought that he was in there rel- relieving himself. That's. That's the first time I heard that I heard that um, phrase used in the Bible, and so um, with this term, as, as they say it in the, in the NIV, I automatically thought about that as well. But we see where God actually led someone into someone's hands. Um, Saul believed. Just, just one fact: like Eglon was the king of Moab. Eglon, just the king of Moab. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> During that time in Judges, is what we're saying. Mm-hmm. But um. So Saul was actually led into David's hands, into David's hands while, David, while, while Saul was thinking that David was led into his hands by God. You understand what I'm saying? And you could see the difference in the way it was handled. David is, Saul, is God's anointed, but Saul had no issue trying to spare him multiple times. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if the priests were anointed in any type of way, but he had no issue killing them, no conviction. Well, not that the Bible says or that he shows. But David had conviction with just tearing off his his, his clothes. Like, that's a piece of his shirt. That, that, he was conscience stricken. You see what I'm saying? And so we could see where the power of God really lied, you know? And we could see how, based on this, we could see how a lot of people can attribute secular things to God. But what is the outcome? Is the outcome something that is not of God? It can't be. I heard, I heard somebody, a friend of mine was telling me that, um, his him and his in his relationship, they 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 deal with certain forms of divination, certain mm-hmm. what we would call witchcraft, you know, mm-hmm. certain certain practices, right? But he's saying that it's a it's a spiritual journey for him because he prays to God while doing it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about anything sexual. I'm just, I'm talking more so like with psychic readings and stuff like that, like them type of things. And he say when they when they you know when they do their little ritual thing. He prays to God, you know. My friend also told me that, like, he he understands why they call alcohol spirits because he feels like he's closer to the Holy Spirit when he's inebriated in that type of way. And he say, bro, whatever spirit is in you, bro, you can get closer to that thing. These are these are thoughts that people feel, right? Wholeheartedly, I believe. Well, I, I can't say wholeheartedly. They they feel that, and like he was confident enough to tell me that while we were having a religious conversation. And what I had to tell him was. Truthfully, bro, do not be deceived. The um, we know about God because of this book. Ain't none of us was around when none of this was, was happening. We, but our account of God is from personal life and from the book. Mm-hmm. Now, this book is very detailed in the way God, um, in, in how to know God, basically, especially in Deuteronomy five. We have the law. We have the Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy, um, six. We have the Shema and stuff like that. Like, um, the thing about it is. You're not going to be getting closer to God by doing things that are closer to, to the devil. And when I say that, closer to the devil, I'm meaning literally the opposite of what God says. So if God says, thou shalt not kill, and you kill, you're not getting closer to God by killing. Mm-hmm. If, if he says, thou shalt not commit adultery, and you commit adultery, you're not getting closer to God by doing these things. If you feel like God is asking you to do these things, you need to be aware that it's not the most high God that is asking you to do these things. God, I feel like God made it very clear, his stance on divination, witchcraft, 
etc. When we when we read Deuteronomy, bro, like multiple times he talks about witchcraft. Multiple times he talks about false prophets. He talks about you know if if somebody if somebody has a prophecy that comes true and then they tell you to, to go worship idols, no, kill them. You see what I saying? Like don't nine chapters ago, he didn't tell us like like oh yeah, like arrogance is like. You see, he's saying it's like idolatry, um, rebellion. It's like witchcraft. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? And so we see where in the New Testament it say you will know them by their fruits. Mm-hmm. You understand? And this was this was a chapter in Matthew that was talking about false prophets, false teachers. I want to also talk about false ideologies. You will know them by their fruits. If you feel like as Saul, Saul, I talking to Saul. Obviously, he's not mm-hmm. around, right? But if you feel like God is leading you to kill his anointed or to kill someone who God is with. Remember, Saul knew God was with him when he killed Goliath. Mm-hmm. He knew God. If you feel like God is killing you, is is, is, is leading you to, to kill that man, you have to accept that that is not God. Or that's not the, the most high God. That might be a God with a small g. You understand? If you feel like God is leading you to do something that is not of God, it is not God. You understand? We have certain situations in the Bible where it might appear that that's what's happening. Number one is when Abraham was asked to kill um, his son Isaac. It might appear, right? And I could understand Abraham because he could say, bro, thou shalt not kill. God couldn't have been asking me to do that. But literally, Abraham's quote-unquote sacrifice, which never actually happened, was a, a type. It was a foreshadowing mm-hmm. of how much it would take the Most High God to have to yes. allow Jesus to be killed. Mm-hmm. When we read the story, people, is, when we read the story of Abraham, people say, I've heard people say, Bro, that's so wild. Bro, God was tripping for that, you know? God, how you could ask someone to kill their son? Bro, how y'all could expect me to send my son to be killed for y'all's sake? As crazy as that sound, that's how crazy I had to be to allow people who are a sinful nation to have the ability to be saved or, or to go to heaven. That's how crazy that was, right? Another thing is, um, what's needful is lawful. When, um, when, when well, you know, David ate the showbread, when um, Jesus, they plucked corn on the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. It might appear that the, uh, that God is asking them to do the wrong thing, but no, this was a needful thing. This was something that if we deny this thing, it would lack love to let someone starve. God doesn't isn't asking you to do that. You understand what I'm saying? And so the overall point, and I mean to take over. No, take no, over see, this keep right, going, bro. Keep going, keep but, going, keep going. But the, the the main point that I got from this story, bro, and I feel like it's something that we all need to be aware. Of. The way we started this text was that, bro, it can't be I. It can't be what I think. What I think, bro. Nobody should should be able to rely. Nobody has the right to rely on what they think, because we have to also realize that what we think is just a compilation of the, the, the of our surroundings and our environments, bro. We think based on the things that we consume. A lot of our thoughts are not independent thoughts, bro. We our, our parents teach us this when we were young. We might not even remember that we learn it at school. We see how society. We we have this notion based on the things that we see in society, bro. As human beings, we are too imperfect to be able to define good and evil, to define right and wrong. We have to allow God to define these things for us. And so we will know them by our fruit. The overall theme that I'm getting from this is, bro, we cannot be the judge of what is of God and what's not of God. We have to compare it to the to the to the um the examples that God gave us to the Bible and to thus said the Lord. David showed great restraint in that cave. He had the opportunity to take the life of his enemy, but he decided to obey the voice of God instead. David spared Saul because he was the Lord's anointed. But is that how David treats all of his enemies? We'll talk more about that on the next episode of A Breath of Fresh Air. Tonight's episode included voice acting by your hosts, Earl Roberts and the Cars Gay. Remember to go ahead and research on your own in order to get a more firm understanding of tonight's episode. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can follow us on social media at A Breath of Fresh Air Pod on Instagram and B O F A P O D on Twitter. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you next week.